Good evening there, everybody. Uh, what is happening? Hopefully, you all are having a wonderful day today. <laughs> so I thought that I would talk about this recent interview that Deontay Wilder had. Uh, I believe this guy that is interviewing him is actually a ring announcer, but I don't know his exact name when it comes down to it. I know that I've seen him somewhere before, but anyways, you can go ahead and check out this video if you don't want to. It's called Deontay Wilder Slams Tyson Fury and Warns Anthony Joshua as he speaks out. I believe the channel's name is called uh, IFL TV, as it says up there in the corner. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, we're going to hear what Deontay Wilder says about these cheating allegations. We're going to hear a little bit about what he thinks is going to happen in the third fight between himself and Tyson Fury. So let's get into it. Let's see what he has to say. Life that make me wise in the future. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to uh, July the 24th to show people... What's, what's the really what's really good because they know in that fight they know when Chris took my mask off they knew something was wrong with Deontay Wilder out of five years with 10 title defense you don't know what's going on then you know. that's right apparently Deontay Wilder apparently he just had a bad night at the office you know even before these uh cheating allegations came out when it came down to it uh <laughs> I remember watching a certain amount of these videos and uh, all these Deontay Wilder fans, all these LDBC new media channels, what were they saying? Oh, well, you know, I just think that Deontay Wilder, that he had a bad night at the office. Once again, you know, I wonder if you were to ask these channels, uh, I wonder if you were to ask these channels if Manny Pacquiao or Canelo Alvarez, you know, did, did they just have a bad night at the office uh, when they faced Floyd Mayer the Jr.? Or did, did they just get beat overall by the better opponent? Uh did Sergey Kovalev, did he have uh, a bad night at the office against Andre Ward, or did he just get beat by the better opponent? <laughs> you know, uh, the, the, these are questions that I would love to ask them when it comes down to that, you know, but, but I already know what their answers would be, you know. All of a sudden, when it comes to one of their fighters that they like, oh, it, it's a bad night at the office. Once again, man, uh, these channels, when it comes down to it, uh, who possibly, to be honest with you, may be even paid off. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even sure who the hell knows. But when it comes down to the overall, uh, these channels, uh, they're, really, they're really nothing more than just over-emotional fanboys. That's all they are. So, it is what it is. Anyway. No. But that's basically Deontay Wilder saying right there that he believes that he got drugged. Uh, which Deontay is full of shit when it comes down to it. I don't even think he truly believes that himself because the first excuse that he was using is that uh, his suit was too heavy. Now, according to certain LDBC new media channels like Aki TV and a certain amount of the other channels, they said apparently that Deontay Wilder actually never said that. Well, that came out to be a lie because Deontay Wilder, you can go ahead and take a look at certain audio tapes, turns out he did say that. <laughs> so once again, for those of you overall that watch these LDBC new media channels, these LDBC and new media channels cannot be trusted. They do not overall look at things in a logical and objective light. So it is what it is. Anyway. Hey, may God be with you. But like I said before, many people, especially in boxing, they did this, Ray. They did that, Ray. They yeah. allowed them to do this. They saw no evil. They heard it, so they didn't speak. You know. And then when you ask about the gloves, well, I didn't, I, what you, you, you can't. You can't not see that. Gloves do not bend. Your wrist can't bend unless you double join it or something. How the hell are you bend? I've already debunked this theory when it comes down to it. <laughs> and that's a technique that has never been used before. Like, whenever you hear someone cheating in boxing, you, you've, you've never seen that technique used before. Now, Joey Spencer, who's a big Deontay Wilder fan, by the way, but the LDBC and New Media, they, uh, they didn't seem to put that information out there. Uh, Joey Spencer apparently uh, said, oh, I've, I've had certain guys overall that use that technique, you know, on me, you know, that that's especially a Detroit and Michigan, you know, uh, thing overall, you know, that a lot of people use that. <laughs> what a bunch of bullshit. I have never heard uh, anyone ever slip their hand lower into the glove when it comes down to it because it wouldn't even work. <laughs> it, wouldn't, it would not really work that well when it comes down to it. And it would be so obvious when it comes down to it. Uh, the glove would almost be slipping off if your hand was lower into the glove. It's just a bunch of bullshit when it comes down to it anyway. 90 degree angle. It don't keep a fold in. It don't keep a fold in space, nor 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 does it nor does it, 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 it have loose space in it. It's impossible. It's impossible for that to happen. On top of all the other things, you know what I'm saying? But God is good. 
Not so all that's... Deontay, is that why you, one of the reasons why you decided to part company with J.D. is because he was in the locker room watching the hands, you know, get taped and everything else? I mean, was, was that a point of contention for you? Why, why did I do what? You know what I'm saying? Why, why you... And apparently Deontay Water has not parted ways with J.D.'s, which, <laughs> which is interesting. Uh, personally, in my opinion, I believe Mark Breland might have been more of a help to Deontay Water than J.D.'s. But maybe that's just my opinion. Uh, but maybe it would have been best to get rid of both of them, to be honest, and just start out new. Uh, there was a certain amount of people that predicted maybe he'd go to Earl Spence Jr.'s trainer or maybe overall that, you know, he could go to uh, Floyd Mayweather to potentially get some advice. <laughs> and I haven't seen him do either of that, so we'll see what happens. Anyway. Decided to part company with JDs is what I'm asking. Who, 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 who gave you that information? No, I'm just saying is that you parted company. You guys, you, he's no longer with your team, right? Who gave you that information? No, I'm not. I'm, a, I'm just asking. Oh, you're asking. Oh, you're asking. asking. No, Jay is still with your team still. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jay's still here. Jay's still okay. here. You know, with the, the, with the situation with the gloves. Is, you know, because I see, you know, you see reports out there and like, you know, you, you don't see Jay in your training video. So that's why. I came to the conclusion, oh, Jay's no longer with Deontay, but you're saying he is with you. Yeah, most definitely. Um, one of the uh, one of the training videos, you can clearly see him in the back, and sometimes you can hear his audio okay. in the background as well, too. Uh, but Jay is definitely with me. You know, uh, uh, you know, I understand the situation in the back with the with the gloves and stuff like that. Sometimes you can just be inexperienced, you know to know what to look for and stuff like that. Now, I had guys on my team that, you know, understood it. Like when I had Russ with me, he under, he, he's a glove guy. He make gloves. So yeah, he know what to look, he know what to look for. See, Jay is, is unexperienced with the gloves and knowing what to look for and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And he mostly on the friendly side. But at this point in time right here, we want it back in blood. Ain't nobody friendly on this squad no more. Y'all, they stole that. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and the way the world... And a lot of people in boxing did this right here. I'm doing like that to everybody. You know what I mean? That's that's my mentality. Because I gave you the good side of me. Y'all villainized me. Y'all always want to make it seem like I'm the villain and all wild of this. But that's just only the love. That's only to show the importance that I am, how special I am in this sport because I am. You know? You're special to a certain degree, Deontay. But let's be real. Uh, you're the fourth best heavyweight of your generation. And then a certain amount of people, they ain't going to like that. Uh, you know, what Deontay Wilder is, is that he's kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, like I said, uh, I, I don't want to call him this generation's George Foreman. In terms of a style, he is. <laughs> because uh, George Foreman overall was a plan A fighter, just like Deontay Wilder. But when it comes down to it, George Foreman, of course, certainly was a greater fighter than Deontay Wilder because he just accomplished more and won the bigger fights in his career. Deontay, besides the Luis Ortiz fight, I can't really say has won uh, many big fights in his career. And a lot of people over are not going to agree with me on that. Um, but when it comes down to it, like I said, in my opinion, he would be the fourth best heavyweight of this era. Of the 2010s going into the 2020s. The best heavyweight, in my opinion, of that era so far, you'd have to rank Tyson Fury. Just, just with what he's accomplished. Number two would either have to be Vladimir Klitschko or Anthony Joshua. And then that means in last place you would have to have Deontay Wilder because he does have 10 title defenses. He does have, uh, you know, a certain amount of fights, certain amount of knockouts. But let's be real, they <laughs> they did not really come across that elite, that elite of an opponent, you know, or of opponents that often. So it is what it is. I know a lot of people are going to get after me on that, but <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, your 10 title defenses, let's be real, Deontay, the majority of those title defenses came against C-class fighters. It's kind of like Terrence Crawford or Gennady Golovkin when he was defending, when they were defending their titles. So, it is what it is. When do you ever get a fighter that you have to be perfect for 12 seconds, for 12 rounds, I don't have to be perfect for two seconds, literally. <laughs> so is that uh, why, you, as you head into this third fight, you know, Tyson Fury has come out and he said he owns you, he has your soul. soul. It's going to be, you know, a walk in the park for him. You know, what, what are your thoughts on that? 
We'll see. We'll see what we'll we'll see if he if he keep that same energy when that time comes. You know, all this right here is just for me. That's all that is. We know. We know what happened. He know what happened. Come on. Does that you know piss you saying? off, though, Deontay? You even, says all that don't, stuff. No, it don't. No, it don't. It can't. Why would it? Why will it? Why would it? Because what, whatever happens, come to twenty four. You know, once again, Deontay apparently believes in these allegations, but once again. Uh... <laughs> Why would you talk about it nine to ten months after uh, the you know the cheating the quote unquote cheating happens? I'm sure Deontay Wilder had heard about it for some time, and you you're only going to talk about it <laughs> nine to ten months after it happened, Deontay. And you expect me to believe that you 100% believe that you got cheated in that fight? Okay. Then that what happened. You know what I'm saying? I'm very I'm very confident in what I'm gonna do. Look, they couldn't even knock me out even under that juju. I was under some juice. They couldn't even knock me out. They couldn't even keep me down. <laughs> oh, you were under some juju, Deontay? You were under some voodoo? <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. I've seen some athletes that make some excuses for my day, but I've never seen an athlete make as many excuses as Deontay Wilder has. And let me tell you this. Deontay Wilder, even before Tyson Fury, he's been a known excuse maker. Uh, but in the Luis Ortiz first fight, uh, when he had uh, his interview with the Luis Ortiz rematch, he said the reason why he had so much problems in that fight was because he had the flu. <laughs> Don't take my word for it. Go ahead and take a look at this interview. All right? It is what it is. Like I said, it took a disloyal trainer to throw the towel in. And the crazy shit about it all, right? I hate to tell you this, Deontay. That quote-unquote disloyal trainer was the best man in your corner. <laughs> Uh, that was the person overall that seemed to care about you the most. I'm not saying that JD's maybe does not care about you, but uh, Mark Breland did the correct thing. He threw in the towel, and that's what he needed to do because Deontay, if that fight would have continued, you certainly would have went out on your shield, and you would have been laying on your back. I have no doubt about that whatsoever. When I had Mark, everybody said I should get rid of him. But when I got rid of him, he was the best thing that happened to me. But we already know what that did. I, you know, I don't have the, I don't have the complexion for the protection, and I love it. I love it. That's right. Apparently, Tyson Fury, you know, he has the complexion for the protection, and that's the only reason why he has the heavyweight title. You know, when it comes down to it. Uh, once again, I've already stated this. Uh, certain Caucasian fighters or fighters that can be counted as Caucasian, do they get represented in a better light than <laughs> certain other demographics or? especially black fighters, you can say that when it comes down. I don't have a problem with that. Can you say overall that even they get better promotion? I'm not saying overall that none of that happens when it comes down to it, but to say that Tyson Fury is just the champion because he has a complexion for the protection. Once again, I've already stated this. If they wanted Tyson Fury to be, to be champion that, that badly, why the hell score the first fight a draw when it comes down to it? <laughs> why, 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 why overall would... Why would they not just score that first fight for Tyson Fury when it comes down to it? Anyway. Because it gives me a more challenging <clears throat> life in this world. I got thick skin. I've been raised. I've been, look, I'm from I'm from Alabama, baby. I've been, I've been had thick skin and all the shit that goes on. You know what I'm saying? So I'm very aware and in tune with what goes on, and that's, that brings power to me. I love it. You know what I mean? To, to get all the criticism and whatever people think. When I look around... And I think that it's over. I see all my good days. I wait my bad days. And that allow me not to complain, baby. You know what I'm saying? Because I know half of the people in the world have never, ever achieved just a small little bit of what I've done. And they, that's that's power for me. I don't get mad about what people say or get frustrated about what he's talking about because that's just nervous talk to me. Well, we'll see. <laughs> you're talking a hot one right now, Deontay. You're, talk, you're talking a... A great deal when it comes down to we'll, we'll see what you do uh, and you know overall if you do have that mindset I think that that's a great mindset to not let what other people say affect you but we'll see what happens Deontay I, I once again I need to see him in the ring <laughs> I need to see what he does how he reacts what he's going to do he apparently is this confident figure right now uh, I'm, I'm gonna need to see that in the ring we know we know he don't have no power we know he can't. He gave me every bit. Stop bullshitting, Deontay. <laughs> when it comes out. You know damn well that Tyson Fury was able to hurt you. Not even in just the second fight. 
he was able to hear it hurt you in the first fight. And that's what that's what a lot of these Deontay Wilder fanboys and a lot of these channels they leave out. Deontay Wilder actually had an interview with Colin Cowherd where he said that Tyson Fury hurt him. All right? In the first fight. <laughs> so Tyson Fury has always been able to hurt Deontay Wilder. He can claim all this bullshit all he wants to that, you know, oh, he doesn't have any power. He don't believe that shit when it comes down to he He, he can say overall whatever he wants. He don't believe that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no way that Tyson Jerry, who who's anywhere from 250, 270 pounds, he keeps punching you and you don't feel those punches. Like, come on, man. I stuff him in that ring, and I took it all. I knew what was going on with my body. You sure did take it all, Deontay. You took a hell of an ass whooping in that second fight. <laughs> you you sure did take it all. I felt it when the mask came off. I knew something was wrong with me. I knew I was not right. Mm -hmm. The people that was looking in, even the people at the high, at the top, looking at the at the screen, knew something was wrong with me. I wasn't doing the same thing. My eyes was, I was looking trained, drowsy. Oh, please. <laughs> Once again, Deontay Wilder, he can say all this bullshit that he wants to. I want to see uh, how Deontay Wilder looks in that third fight. I want to see overall uh, if he comes out swinging or overall uh, if he's a little bit tentative to throw. I, I want to see uh, what he does because, to be honest with you, if I had to guess, I think he's going to come out there. I think he's going to be a little bit tentative to throw. That's what I personally believe. That's that. That's what my uh, brain is telling me, but we'll see what happens. I knew it. I could have went back to my corner and said, yo, I don't feel right. I don't think I should fight. But I accepted. I accepted the challenge. I accepted what was going to happen. I was like, oh, shit, here you go. That bell, ding. Let's go. Let's go. That's the warrior mentality of me. That's the warrior mindset. And I tell everybody. Don't worry about my health. Don't worry about my children. Because at the end of the day, something happened to me. You motherfuckers ain't going to do nothing for my kids. Let's be real. Let's be honest. It's good to be optimistic. Uh, it's good to be modest about, hey, let's talk about the kids and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you're not. That's why I handle my business not only in the inside of the ring, but on the outside of the ring as well. My children will be <laughs> richer than a lot of us, you know, even me. You know, Man, That's great. And I think that that's a great thing. And a lot of a lot of your fans, even Deontay Wilder, when it comes down to it, uh, you may think overall that those pro black fans right now <laughs> that they have you back when it comes down to it. Uh, but those guys, they, they don't care about your health, uh, you know, just as much as the people that hate you. All right, that's why they wanted that fight to continue on uh, in that in that rematch. But it is what it is, and you're lucky that you had a person like Mark Breland uh, in your corner uh, to stop that fight because. You were getting the shit kicked out of you. <laughs> I don't I don't care what Deontay Wilder says. He can say overall that he wanted to go out on the shield. If you would have went out on your shield, Deontay, uh, you would have never been the same fighter ever again. Like I've already said this. I don't even know if he's ever going to be the same fighter ever again anyway. But we'll see what happens. I'm saying because I've laid down the foundations. I've put in certain things that allow them to be, be great. If, uh, you know, while I'm here and while I'm gone, you know. So I don't want people to worry about nothing that I nothing that I do. I say I go off on my shield. If I'm gonna die, I'd rather die doing something that I love doing. You know what I mean? Point blank, period. And everybody know I me. Mean, you know you don't throw no towel in on no Deontay Wilder because the fight ain't over until it's over. I have strength from the first round into the twelfth round. I Deontay, you were not going to last. <laughs> I hate to tell you this, you were not going to last in that fight, man. Uh, and listen, I know that Deontay Wilder, that he has came back in certain fights. I and mean, we can sit here all the all the living long damn day and say, oh, well, you know, maybe if uh, he could have just recuperated. Deontay was not going to recuperate. <laughs> he was not going to recuperate. That fight was over. It was done. And Mark Breland understood that. That's why he threw the towel in. You know, all, the, all these idiot Deontay Wilder fans, they want to say overall, oh, Tyson Fury, you know, he couldn't even knock out Deontay Wilder. The corner had to stop it. Well, I hate to tell you this. That's called a knockout. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, when the corner has to stop it, that's called a knockout. When Mayweather, uh, when he stopped, uh, you know, Ricky Hatton and the referee stopped it, that was called a knockout. All right? It is what it is. When Deontay Wilder, when he beat Chris Ariola and his corner had to stop it, guess what? That was counted as a knockout. When Miguel Cotto, when he beat the shit out of, Sir, out of Sergio Martinez and, you know, his corner stopped it, guess what? That's called a knockout. All right? 
it is what it is. You you can claim all this bullshit all you want to when it comes down to it that, oh, he could have went on. Deontay Wilder was done in that fight, man. He was done. And he, he can claim all this bullshit all he wants to, that he wants to go on in the shield. Deontay, you're lucky that you had a Mark Breland <laughs> in that corner for you. And if you get the shit kicked out of you again in this third fight, you better hope that Malik Scott or JDs is looking after your back just like Mark Breland was. Because they may, they may need to stop this fight for a third time, or, or excuse me, in the third fight. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> would knock you out from the first round to the 12th round at the last second. That's facts. And that's just me. When you have... You, you are not going to come back in that fight, Deontay. You can tell when a certain fighter is going to come back in a fight and, you know, or, or when they might have the ability to. And when, when uh, you know, a time that they don't have the ability to. You could just tell Deontay Wilder on that night he was not going to come back. It is what it is. It was the same thing with Anthony Joshua versus Andrew Ruiz. Now, we've seen certain fights where Anthony Joshua has been in problems or has been in trouble, and he came back to win the fight. Take a look at this fight against Vladimir Klitschko. You know, Anthony Joshua, he was able to come back. <laughs> but in that Andrew Ruiz first fight, uh, if you knew what you were watching, you knew that Anthony Joshua, I mean, shit, but like, what, the third knockdown? He was not going to come back in that fight. <laughs> there's certain times overall to where the referee or the corner, uh, they got to save the fighter. A fight like that, I'm special. I'm special. When you have a fighter like that, you just, you don't, it, you, it ain't over till it's over. You have to kill me, and I do mean that. Every bit of that. Careful what you wish for, Deontay. Uh, if you get that for the third fight, <laughs> if Tyson Fury ends up knocking you, <coughs> excuse me, if he ends up knocking you out, in that third fight, uh, even worse than what he did in the second fight, your career is over. All right? It is what it is. And another thing when it comes to Deontay Wilder, if your, if, your, if your stomach can't digest what your eyes about to see, don't come to my fight. Don't watch my fight. Because I mean blood and I'm out for blood, baby. So are you telling us, Deontay, that there's going to be some <laughs> violence on July 24th oh. in Las Vegas? From the time I stepped foot in Vegas. <laughs> Deontay, this is, I, I feel like you're in a very good place spiritually. Um, you know, you were on a grind <laughs> defending your type. We'll see about that. We're going to see how good he is spiritually and how how confident he is on July 24th. I'm not sure if I'm buying this whole spiel right now, but we'll see what happens. A, a, a lot. You know, you had 10 title defenses. Do you feel refreshed from this break? Oh, because man. I'm watching you do different training tactics and everything else. I feel like your body's refreshed. Uh, you have that this glimmer in your eyes that I don't know if I saw that leading up to previous fights because you were, you know, defending your title, you know, at twice a year, things along those lines. Is that fair to say? Oh, that's very fair to say. You know, uh, I've always fought off of injuries, you know. I've never been 100%. Never been 100%. And, I, and, you know, I advise all fighters after every fight to go get an MRI. Go get your body checked and stuff like that because... You can argue that nobody fights at 100%. But it is what it is. Anyway. Sometimes you can have... Uh, 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 you can have things that the MRI doesn't see that covers up. You can Your body can, you can be flared up in the inside where the MRI cannot read you may have other tears and, and, and things that's up in your arms or whatever. And that was the case of me. You know, although we have the we had the major thing that was going on, but because it was so inflamed in the inside, they couldn't see other problems. You know what I'm saying? I had two tears in my, my shoulder at one point in time. My shoulder was dislocated at one point in time, but popped back in and stuff. And I have a high tolerance of pain, so I never felt them things and stuff like that. And... You know, just over these 17 months or whatever it's been, man, it's just all been, like, recovery, healing, you know, refocusing of the mind, um, deep meditation, you know, uh, enjoying the loved ones, just enjoying everything that's going on. Like I said, you know, I have a close circle, and uh, I don't have nothing but positivity around me. I don't have nothing but love around me. So when you have that, how can you focus on the negative that's going around? Let everybody mm -hmm. talk about you. They talking about you at the end of the day, good or bad, they talking about you. Even when you don't give them nothing to talk about, they make up things. And let you let let let, let hear it from Well <laughs> Deontay, you've given people quite a bit to talk about with these allegations. 
but it is what it is when it comes down to it. Anyways, that's pretty much going to be the end of the video. Hopefully Deontay Wilder, for his sake, is in a positive light. Hopefully overall he's in a positive place. I'm not sure if I'm completely buying it. <laughs> and I need to see what he does in the ring uh, on July 24th. Because if Tyson Fury, if he gets on his ass early, and if he's able to somewhat hurt him early, I want to see how Deontay Wilder reacts. We'll see what happens. I also want to see what Deontay Wilder picked up in his new training. That's what I'm going to be interested in as well. But we'll leave it here when it comes down. Anyways, that's really about it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you all later.